What's up guys, today's video is on the top 3 best budget TVs in 2023. Through extensive research and testing, I've put together a list of options that'll meet the needs of different types of buyers. So whether it's price, performance, or its particular use, we've got you covered. For more information on the products, I've included links in the description box down below, which are updated for the best prices. Like the video, comment and don't forget to subscribe. Now let's get started. The 50-inch Vizio M-Series Quantum X brings the best of Vizio's top-performing TV to a budget price point, with a few compromises. It's a solid gaming TV for PS5 and Xbox Series X with one HDMI port that supports 4K at 120Hz and has a low lag time, but home cinema lovers might be let down by its limited brightness and chunky design that AT26 pounds, it's relatively light, but wall mounting it higher than your shoulders is going to take a bit of effort given the bulkiness of the screen. Even then the TV will jut out over 3 inches from the wall, which is more than other QLED TVs. Its full measurements without a stand are 43.81 by 25.48 by 3.41 inches. Thankfully, the TV uses a standard 200mm x 200mm Visa mount so it should be compatible with most cheap mounts out there, the design might be a bit of a letdown, but the performance is every bit of what we'd expect from a mid-range 4K HDR TV and then some. We tested the set using an X-Rite i1 Pro Spectrophotometer, a SpectraCal VideoForge Pro Pattern Generator, and Portrait Display's CalMan Calibration Software and encountered some strong results for a TV in this price range. In bright SDR mode, basically what you'd see out of the box if you didn't change any of the other settings besides the picture mode, you'll get around 500 nits of peak brightness. That's perfect for your basic cable TV. Upscaling is decent thanks to Vizio's IQ Ultra Plus processor and motion really wasn't an issue. In terms of color coverage, we measured its Rec.709 gamut coverage at 99.9194% but a Delta E, which measures how the source color differs from the displayed color, with lower numbers being better, at a 9.09, .09, which was a bit high. Instead of watching in bright mode, we tend to recommend the calibrated mode instead. It's darker and less colorful, unfortunately, but you'll get more accurate colors. In calibrated mode, we measured peak brightness at 428 nits, Rec.709 gamut coverage at 97.8749%, but a much better Delta E of 1.7444. The 43-inch X80K is small by current TV standards, but it is far from as svelte as many sets you'll find on the market. It measures 37.95 by 22.17 inches, HXW, and is 2.72 inches thick, giving it the faintest chunky feel. Everything is black and smooth on the front, but the set's rear combines a series of fins at the top with a nice-looking but sedate square panel taking up most of the space, the X80K is a traditional LCD set with direct LED backlighting, as opposed to the edge-lit TVs you will often find in the budget range. This, paired with Sony's robust internal processing, results in generally better picture quality than you'll usually get for this price. It doesn't, however, quite compare with what you'll see on more advanced, and thus more expensive, sets from Sony and other manufacturers. This was borne out by our lab testing with an X-Rite i1 Pro Spectrophotometer, a SpectraCal VideoForge Pro Pattern Generator, and Portrait Display's CalMan Calibration Software. The TV's maximum SDR brightness was on the lower end of the spectrum of TVs we've tested, 272 nits in standard mode and 248 nits in custom mode, the closest to an out-of-the-box calibrated picture, whereas the 43-inch Samsung Q60B clad TV managed 378 and 313 nits in its comparable modes, respectively and the 50-inch Vizio M-Series Quantum smoked both in standard, with 499 nits, but came in third in its best mode, with 121 nits. The Sony's color was likewise good, with custom modes Delta E, the difference between the color at the video source and as displayed on the screen, with lower numbers being better, the lowest of the three sets at 1.6907, versus 1.7727 for the Samsung and 1.85 for the Vizio, and its coverage of the Rec. 709 color gamut the highest, 99.6177%, compared with 98.8096% for the Samsung and 98.4549% for the Vizio. The design of the Amazon Fire TV Omni QLED is nothing to write home about, but it's also not ugly. The TV offers decently small gray bezels around the display, with a larger bezel on the bottom that houses a range of sensors. The legs on the TV are attached via two screws, and are relatively far apart, meaning that you should have enough space for even a large soundbar like the Sonos Arc between them, thankfully, the port selection on the Fire TV Omni QLED is pretty solid. 
As we've come to expect of TVs in this price range lately, you'll get 4 HDMI ports, and they all support HDMI 2.1, with one of them being an eARC port. Since they're all HDMI 2.1, gamers will be able to take advantage of features like auto low latency mode and a variable refresh rate, however since the panel only supports a refresh rate of 60Hz, gamers are probably best looking elsewhere anyway, the Fire TV Omni QLED offers full array local dimming with 80 zones in the 65-inch model we're reviewing. It also leverages quantum dots to make for a more vibrant image. And, it supports all expected HDR formats, HDR10, HLG, HDR10 Plus Adaptive, and Dolby Vision IQ. In day-to-day -day use, I found that the Amazon Fire TV Omni QLED performed fairly well. Images were detailed and crisp, and colors were bright and vibrant. Having previously reviewed the Hisense U7H and U8H, however, I found it to be a little lacking in overall image quality and backlight control, and if you're looking for a TV with the best image quality in this price range, it is worth looking at an option from Hisense. The Fire TV Omni QLED generally delivered a bright image, in both SDR and HDR, beating out much of the more expensive OLED competition in some of the similarly priced LED competition, like the Vizio M-Series Quantum. That said, the Hisense U7H beat the Amazon TV in all brightness tests, including in SDR and HDR viewing. For example, the Fire TV Omni QLED achieved a brightness of 425.9 nits in HDR filmmaker mode at 100% of the display, the Vizio M series Quantum reached 322.8 nits and the LG C2 only 165.5 nits. Thank you watching this video do like and subscribe.